unusual to bring this up as I'm going into the message today, but as you guys were talking about it, um, you know, we were camping just over, a few miles over, and thinking, ah, some high winds, but other than that, boy, it's a nice weekend. And we've been there since Thursday. Yeah. Um, so, and so for us, right, we just went about our, we went hiking, we went mountain biking, we had the fire, making s'mores, and life was good. And it's sort of, as everybody was sharing that, I was thinking about this morning's message. And I, I'm going to ask um, if you have questions. I don't know why I turn when I say this. Um, but if there are any questions from this week, I'm going to ask you to hold them. Don't forget them. Um, and we'll do it next week. Because we're, as we read through Scripture, right, we're, we're starting to get into the, the missionary trips of, of Paul and Barnabas and um, we're going to see the relationships of the church in different, both individually and corporately. And so, any I have to believe that any questions, most because I know Kathy had a question she asked me on a, yesterday or this morning. Um, it was more of a the idea of the church and and what's happening in the movement of the church. Um, and so, is it safe to assume those are sort of the questions that you have, um, other have? So I want you to hold on to those because we'll talk about that more next week. But the focus for this week, I really, really want to focus on what the message, what the, the, the study guide, oh, I forgot to do it, because we are on week seven. What, did you, you read something else? I thought we were still stuck on five. <laughs> I just put week five online for this week for week five part one. It ended up being a part two study because we had so many questions on week five. Um, we were joking about it. Okay, I'll keep, I'll keep calling. You, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's all good. Okay. I don't know. You got that smile. Who me? Yeah. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's really good. So we are on week we are on week seven of the, for this week of the Bible study. Um, the Holy Spirit unleashed in you, and um, I I just want I want to read just the last paragraph of the thought for the week that it had here in week seven. It said, "May you learn to walk in total dependence upon the Spirit, seeking His will, not yours; His way, not yours; His timing, not yours; His power, not yours; His wisdom, not yours." May you keep on being filled with the Spirit. Now, I want to go into the Word of God. And this is the part where their time together, the beginning of the church ministry, the church push, the, the missionary, I shouldn't say the ministry, but the missionary journeys of the, um, of the church. And it's when they're first sending out Barnabas and Saul, who we know as Paul. And so in chapter 13, down to starting like verse 2, it says, While they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there um, they called to Cyprus, the Word of God for the people of God. So, I want you to think about this for a second. They were in prayer and fasting. And just listening for God's voice and vision of where they should be going. What should be happening next. And this is the part where we could just start talking about, okay, they listened to the Word of God, and God said, you are going to send the the church out. The church is going to grow. We, you know, we start reading this more and more about how they start talking to the Gentiles, and and it's no more just about the Jewish faith. And it's really brought in to the whole world, right? I mean, that's what you guys read this week, right? So we can talk about that, but I want to pull back and just focus on these two verses just for a few minutes today. The idea of fasting and prayer. Now. We all know the importance of prayer, right? Prayer is speaking to God and listening to God's voice. But why fasting? 
And I'm going to give a, a hyphenated answer to all of this, and I want to put it into the context of today. Um, the idea of denying yourself what is, I don't want to say pleasurable, but necessity. necessity. Does denying yourself of your necessities and your pleasures. Because when you do this, you put, and this goes into what you were, you were, part of what you were asking, or a comment you made, um, when we were sitting at the campsite and talking about chaos. All right, do you remember what you said? Chaos precedes change. Chaos precedes change, right? So the idea that you deny yourself your pleasures, you deny yourself of the luxuries, you deny yourself of the conveniences, you are putting yourself, your brain, into a sense of chaos. And at some level, you will be thinking, hey, wait, what if I didn't have all of this stuff? Now, now i got to think about what's going to change, what needs to happen. Which is why I brought up the fact that whatever happened on that side of the hill, right, didn't happen on this side of the hill over the weekend. So there's all of you on that side of the hill going, hey, wait a minute, we've just been denied of luxury and convenience and our normalcy, right? And that's what it really comes down to. Our normalcy has been interrupted. And now your focus goes on, well, how do we fix this? How do we change this, right? And you even brought it up and said, I went out and talked to the guys who are going to fix this, right? Because yeah. I know there's guys that are going to be out there and they're going to take care of this problem and they're going to bring us back to that normalcy. Whereas those of us on the other side of the mountain, we, we were just enjoying life. We weren't even thinking of all of you over there because it wasn't part of our existence. Right? There was no chaos in our world. We had convenience and luxury. I thought about it on a very, very simple aspect. And Kathy was laughing at me. She told me I need to mind my own business. Just sitting at the campsite, you know, we don't tent camp, right? We, we have a nice camper. We have a, we have a decent, we have a modest, but a nice little camper. Um, and I take what we need. I take the wood, and I take an axe, and I take a maul. And some weekends I take a chainsaw. And we have a backup generator if we need it, and right? And so, so I'm sitting there at this at the campsite, and I'm watching these two kids at the next campsite over doing their best to make a fire. And their whole focus is on, you know, getting the size sticks and stuff that they could use because they just came with their cars and they had one little tent and. And I'm sitting here with all this luxury, and I'm watching them, and I'm thinking, I just want to go help them right now. Like, I have everything to go. And she's like, just mind your own business. So they'll, they'll take care of it. Well, I don't know. Like, I, but I got what we need. They have better fire than I did the whole night. <laughs> right? I mean, because that was their focus. And that was their, that was their need. That was their, because I think they ended up cooking on that fire. Mm -hmm. right? so that was their meal. Time, relationship, and yeah, happening. there was all these things that happened around them building fire. Mm -hmm. Whereas us, I just went out, threw some kindling that we bring with us. I actually have a, I have a kindling box that I take, because I don't want to have to go out in the woods and forage for kindling before I build a fire. <laughs> all the luxuries. Right? Eat all the fun out like, of like fire. See, that's sort of it. Really, I'm glad you said that, right? Because because then all I have to do is every once in a while I get up off. I even have I even have a stainless steel fire poker. I don't even have a stick from the woods that I use for the fire. I have a stainless steel fire poker. That's bad. Right? <laughs> Luxuries of the world. Right? I go out, 
to top it off, to make this, this whole story bring back together and really focus on the idea of following the Holy Spirit, and we're going to get to chaos here in a second, is they had to drop a bunch of trees at the campsite over there. They dropped them and cut them and then just left them. Because their idea is people camping will just start picking up all the wood. Fine with me. I knew it was laying there. I brought my mall. We went over and picked up wood. So all I had to do was get up, split some wood a little bit, size I wanted it, throw it in the fire, sit back down. Ah, the luxuries of life. But there's no chaos. I didn't have to think about my entire evening. I didn't have to think about what's next. Now, had I showed up like those kids, which we did in the past, now I have a bit of chaos. Because I don't have everything I need. Now I gotta think about, oh, I gotta go take care of this, and I gotta take care of this, and, and this is the focus, this is the mission, this is what we're leading to, the purpose, the goal, to get to the goal. When we're talking about God, that's where we're at in the world today. See, we have so many luxuries. We have so many conveniences. We have it so easy that it is hard for us to focus on God's goal. Because we think back on, well, He promised us blessings. He promised us the land of milk and honey. Nothing scriptural that says that's the United States. <clears throat> Let's be careful about that. And to say that he promised his people the land of milk and honey said that they would be taken care of. But part of that being taken care of was being obedient to him. Right? You read through old scripture, they didn't have the land of milk and honey the whole time, did they? And sometimes when they had it, it was taken away from them. They had lessons to be learned. At one point, God was so upset with how happy they were with the conveniences that they had and they kept turning away from God. You're right. This guy built an ark. How different are we today? See, that's why I didn't want to focus on the stories of Paul and Barnabas and what they did and how the church grew because the idea of all this is that they started it out by being obedient to God. See, the church didn't grow just because they went out and they started preaching the word with boldness. And they went out and they were willing to, to be stoned, literally. They were willing to handle all of the conflict and the turmoil. They were able to do all of that because the church denied itself of all of its luxuries, which at the time was food, put your mind into the standpoint of, if I have none of this, I must rely on God. Fast for a few days, and the only thing you're going to think about is food. And where is that food coming from? And if you have a relationship with God, you start to become more appreciative of what you have when it's taken away. That's the whole idea of the Catholic tradition of Lent. right? Deny yourself something that is absolutely pleasurable to yourself. Something that has just inherently become part of your life. Take it away and see if it will bring you closer to God. Well, it does, because just like did you has that there, no elected. How many people are living without elected? That's how I started this whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. yep. When you don't have that. But the thing is, when you don't have something like that, I mean, it's a, it's a cool example, and what I said was, right over here, was that the first thing you did is you went to 
you went to where the solution was going to come from, right? What if the problem's bigger than that? What if you feel like you're in your point of place where you're between a rock and a hard place? Right? Didn't we hear that this morning? I don't know where the solution is. And God is saying, come to me. But you need to come to me in a point of absolute chaos. See, because chaos in and of itself is the idea that you don't know the solution. You are not in control. That is chaos. Everything is happening around you, and you don't know where you fit into it. You don't know what you're supposed to be doing. You don't know what role you play. You don't know what you're supposed to just let happen and let it play out, and when you're supposed to intervene. See, in the little story I shared, there was no chaos. I just wanted it done my way. Right? I didn't go into prayer about the young couple over there trying to build a fire. It was about me. I have all of this. I can take care of it. I will go over there. Had I intervened, would I have helped their evening at all? No. I just would have been the jerk who's camping next to them. Truth? Yeah. But in prayer and fasting, deny yourself things of this world. Even if mentally you just have to think, what would life be like without it? And then go to prayer. And then there's one more part of this, which is why then we're going to carry this into next week. Notice that it starts out in Scripture, it says, while they were fasting, while they were ministering and fasting, God came to them. So you're going through this fasting period. You're denying yourself to something. You're just focusing on God. You are at this point where things are out of control. I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing next. I don't know what is the church supposed to be doing. And then all of a sudden, in this moment of just absolute clarity, because if you absolutely give in to this and truly put the rest of the world out, that's what really this whole fasting is about. Put the rest of the world out and focus on nothing but God. You don't focus on your own needs. You don't focus on your own wants. You just focus on listening to God. And at some point, there will be a moment of clarity. And I've had it happen once in my life. One time. Where it was so powerful and undeniable of God's voice speaking. You will do this. Okay. Now, when that happened to me that one time, I'm not going to go into the whole thing because I'll be talking for four hours. But when it happened to me that one time, I didn't know what it meant. I know it clearly said, but I didn't know what it meant. And it happened clear back in 2014. It's now 2022, and I'm getting more and more clarity as to what that actually meant. God's voice speaking to me. But here's the thing. I did not stand up and proclaim, God spoke to me, I shall do this. I'm doing this. I didn't put it on me. Neither did they in Scripture. If you listen to this, if you read Scripture, they said God spoke to us that this should happen. And so they took it to more of the church. That's the next verse down. And they prayed on it. And they fasted. And then they went, here's what's supposed to happen. You see, if God is speaking to you, if the Holy Spirit is really connecting with you, and it is, it's a sort of a way to, to confirm that it is the Holy Spirit. Because, let's face it, there's things we all like to do in life, right? I want to do this. And you just take off and you start doing it, and then it fails miserably. 
You're like, I don't know. God told me to do this, and it didn't happen, so I don't know. I just. But when God speaks to you through the Holy Spirit with this clarity, when you're like in absolute chaos, and something hits you, do this. First thing you should do is take it to the church. I was in prayer, and God spoke to me about this. And then the church, corporately, should pray on it together. See, there's this whole thing that talks about wherever two or three are bound together, right? You can't break it. That, that holds true with everything. And it might be something you have to do alone, but you're never alone if you bring it to the church and the church confirms. Then go. It's interesting. The Holy Spirit is an individual relationship in your growth with Jesus Christ, and yet it's always communal. That makes sense? So fasting is to deny yourself. Simply so that you can Push out this idea that we live in the land of milk and honey and focus on what God wants you to do. I close it this way. And maybe this is an oversimplification. And it doesn't really fit our relationship, but it's the best analogy I have. If I am sitting there watching television... I'm watching some cool mountain bike video. I'll try to make it as realistic as possible. If I'm sitting there watching some cool mountain bike video on television, and Kathy wants to tell me something, and she wants my attention, there's only one of two things that's going to happen. Either I'm going to turn off the television and listen to her, or she's going to turn off the television, so I'll listen to her. God gives us that same opportunity. Through God's word, he's telling you, turn off the TV and listen to me. But if you're not going to do that, at some point, I'm going to create such chaos in your life, you will have no choice but to turn off the stinking television and listen to me. Prayer and fasting. Amen.